Okay, in this video we're going to explore Fubini's theorem and look at what it really takes to be able to exchange the order of integration via an example. So Fubini's theorem says the following, so if the integral over d of the absolute value of a function converges, then we can take that double integral over d and exchange the order of integration as needed. So here we have the iterated integral where we're doing the y integral first and then the x integral second. And here we're doing the x integral first and the y integral second. All right, so the example I wanna explore is the following. So let's say we're taking a double integral over zero one cross zero one. In other words, the unit interval squared of x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared dA. So we're gonna look at the iterated integral in both orders and then we're also going to argue about some value of the absolute value of the integral. Okay, good. So um, let's go ahead and look at the iterated integral when we're doing the y integral on the inside. Okay, so if we're doing the y integral on the inside, it looks like we might want to use some sort of trig substitution and that's exactly what we'll do. So here I'll put like maybe parentheses around this. And notice our trig substitution looks like it should be some kind of tangent thing. So let's go ahead and let y equal x uh, tan theta. That makes uh, dy equal um, x secant squared theta d theta. Great. So notice that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 1 on the outside, then the integral from, and now generally I would change the bounds of integration here, but I'm not going to. I'll go back to x's and y's when this is all done. So I'll just put little boxes there to remind me that I need to go back to x's and y's. And now notice here I've got x squared, that's still x squared, minus y squared, so that's going to be x squared uh, tangent squared theta, all over, now I have x squared plus y squared. Notice that's going to be x squared plus x squared tangent squared theta, all squared. And then my dy is x secant squared theta d theta. And then I have my dx on the outside of all of this. Great. So that's how that's going. Now uh, let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. So notice uh, this numerator uh, doesn't really simplify a ton, but we, you can take an x squared out and that's gonna give us x squared one minus tangent squared theta. And then in the denominator, you can take an x squared out and then you have one plus tangent squared theta, which is a secant squared theta. But then again, we're squaring all of that. So in fact, you get x Q, sorry, x to the fourth secant to the fourth theta. Okay, so a lot of stuff cancels, and uh, let's see what we get after some stuff cancels. So we have this zero to one on the outside, which is like our x integral, and then notice we've got an x squared and an x, so we've got an x cubed in the uh, numerator, and we have an x to the fourth in the denominator, so that means we have an overall one over x. Now we've got a secant squared um, in the numerator and a secant fourth into the in the denominator, which gives us a secant squared in the denominator, but a secant squared in the denominator is a cosine squared in the numerator. So that gives us cosine squared, and now we have a one minus tangent squared theta um, d theta, and then finally a dx on the outside of all of that. So here we have our integral d theta, so I'll put my little reminder boxes there. Good. So now the next thing that I want to do is maybe multiply this out. This is going to give us the integral from 0 to 1, the integral from uh, something to something. And now notice I can distribute this through, and this is going to give me uh, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which that's equal to cosine 2 theta by a trig identity. So I'll let you guys look up that trig identity if you need to. So we have 1 over x times cosine 2 theta. Now we have d theta dx. Okay, great. But notice that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by x. And now the integral of cosine 2 theta is going to be 1 half sine 2 theta. 
then we're going to evaluate that from y equals 0 to y equals 1, which means we need to change this back. Okay, so it may seem like kind of tricky to change that back, but it's actually not too bad because 1 half sine 2 theta is the same thing as cosine theta times sine theta. So that's actually another identity that's uh, useful here. And then we can draw our triangle. So notice if y equals x tangent theta, then that makes tangent theta y over x. So that means we can draw our triangle like this. And that makes this guy right here the square root of x squared plus y squared, like that. Okay, so but now that's going to make uh, cosine theta equal um, x over this square root of x squared plus y squared. And then it's going to make sine theta equal to y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Like that. Great. But that makes cosine theta times theta, sine theta equal to something pretty nice. Now we have the integral from 0 to 1 of um, 1 over x times um, x times y over x squared plus y squared. So that's what we have. But now notice we need to evaluate that from y equals 0 to y equals 1. Okay, um, now notice uh, these x's are going to cancel regardless. And when we evaluate this at y equals 1, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared plus y plus 1 dx. Good. But now taking this antiderivative, that's going to give us arctan of x evaluated from 0 to 1. In other words, it gives us pi over 4. Okay, great. So in other words, if we do this iterated integral, we get pi over 4. All right, I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to do the other order of the iterated integral. Okay, I'm not going to give all of the details, but what I will say is if you take the order of integration in reverse, you don't get pi over 4, you get minus pi over 4. And this should be pretty obvious because changing the order of integration is equivalent to just swapping out y's for x's. But if you swap out y's for x's in this, um, you'll get... Uh, negative x squared plus y squared. In other words, um, we should get negative of the integral we started with. But you could also just check this with all of the details just like we did the first integral and you'll get the same thing. So already we see something's going wrong because we changed the order of integration and we get different values. So now let's go ahead and calculate the integral of the absolute value of this function um, and see what we get. So let's say I'm going to call this thing i squared for this interval squared of x squared minus y squared, its absolute value over the square, the square of x squared plus y squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and hack up a picture of the unit square. So let's see, we'll put a 1 right here, we'll put a 1 right here. So the unit square is going to be given by this picture. Good. Now I'm going to include in this uh, the line y equals x. So that's going to be this line right here that's going to be useful for us, y equals x. And then the subset that we want to look at is the one that we get if we put an arbitrary point here A and an arbitrary point right here B and then we look at a horizontal line and a vertical line going through A. So that gives us this point right here, and the region that we want to consider will be this one right here. So it's going to be that triangle D. Okay, good. So uh, let's go ahead and calculate that. So this is going to make this thing bigger than or equal to this double integral over this region D of the function x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared squared. So notice I no longer need um, a double so no, I no longer need an absolute value because in this region right here, the x values are bigger than the y values. Another thing that I can notice is that in this region d, our function is continuous and bounded. And so we can apply Fubini's theorem because we know that this integral will definitely absolutely converge on this region. Um, and so we can turn this into an iterated integral. So this is going to be the integral um, a to 1 and then a to 
to x. So I'll do the x integral on the outside and the y integral on the inside. Um, so notice my x values are going from a to 1, my y values are going from a to x, and then I'll have um, x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared quantity squared dy dx. Okay. So we calculated this inner integral before, so I'm not going to recalculate that, but what you get is we'll have the integral from a to 1 of, so this is going to be y over x squared plus y squared. Now we need to evaluate that from y equals a to y equals x, and then do our x integral. Okay, great. So notice that is going to give us the integral from a to 1 of, um, so plugging in x for y, we'll get x over um, x squared plus x squared. Now plugging in a for y, we'll get uh, minus a over x squared plus a squared dx. Okay, so notice that this thing right here is always positive, which means we can remove it and we've created something that is greater than or equal to. So this is greater than or equal to the integral from uh, a to 1 of, um, well, that can just be written as 1 over 2x dx. Great. But we can easily calculate this. This is going to be 1 half the natural log of x evaluated from a to 1. And then, in other words, this is minus one-half the natural log of a. Notice I don't need absolute values because my a is positive. Okay, great. But what we can notice here is that this thing can be made as big as we need it to be by pushing this a back towards the origin. In other words, notice that this quantity goes to infinity as a approaches zero from the right. That's a well-known property of the natural log. In other words, that makes this limit, sorry, this double integral go off to infinity, which is exactly why when we tried to apply Fubini's theorem to calculate this iterated integral in both orders, we got a different quantity. Okay, that's a good place to stop.